Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which is to say in the ancient Hebrew, Yahweh, the name of the Heavenly Father, He is Bahashem, and the name Yahweh Shai. He is our salvation, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, a so called black man. Esau Mark is not the same as the Most High's Mark. Esau Mark, which is in Revelation 13, is not the same as Yahweh's Mark in Ezekiel 9. And we're going to get the difference. This is Revelation 13 and verse 16. And it reads, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is six hundred three score and six. So when we go into this prophecy and this revelation and this mark is let's go there. This mark is the Greek word Karagma. Strong's G, 5480, Karagma. Karagma. And the outline of biblical usage is a stamp, an imprint, mark of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist, the mark branded upon horses, Theme carved sculpture graven work. A of idolatrous images. So this mark you're going to receive is going to be a mark or stamp or badge of servitude showing your obedience to this system. It's going to be a physical mark because you get a insight to know that it's a physical mark because it's going to be something that you're going to have to place inside your right hand in order to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to buy or sell or tell how can you buy and sell with the philosophy, you know, of whatever doctrine that most of these, you know, camps are saying that you're going to be able, are they going to be able to take money away from you if you sin? How can you buy or sell with sin? That doesn't make any sense. This mark is physical. It's going to actually be a device that you use that they're going to put inside you that's going to allow you to do commerce where you can buy and sell. You know, that's the whole thing. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save except he that had the mark so you have to have this mark in order to buy and sell because how else can you tell whether or not somebody has the mark if they are if they are buying or selling off of sin because you can easily say that you didn't sin and how would you know that that person sinned or not that doesn't make any sense so this mark is a physical mark and we're going to go into it in this same chapter so you have to have the physical device that's going to be needed in order to complete transaction in this B system. Whether it's buying a Coke out of a convenience store or going to the supermarket or going to a venue such as a sporting venue like a basketball game or a concert, you're going to have to have this mark to do business how are you going to buy and sell with sin if you go into a venue they're going to tell you that hey you can't come in because let's say you you didn't what's a sin you didn't worship or you didn't go to church on Sunday how are they going to be able to pinpoint whether or not what you did on Sunday unless they have some type of physical way of tracking you so that doesn't even make sense and i said sunday we all know that that's the day that 
a lot of people worship the idolatry of Christianity on Sunday. So how are they going to be able to tell whether or not what you did unless they have a device to track you? So that don't make sense to say that sin is the mark. This is a physical mark. And to prove it even further, we're going to go down to 18 where it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. Now we go into that word 603306. Let's get that definition. Because this is the wisdom. You have to go into these things and to line them up and to see whether or not they add up. So it says, here is wisdom. For it, it is the number of... Let's go to the uh, top. It says, here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number. Go into it. Look up the number. It's giving you a hint of the beast for the for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six now when we go into this definition this is the greek word strong's g 5516 chi xi stigma chi xi stigma chi xi stigma so we go into this word and it's 666, the meaning of which is the basis of much vain speculation. No, because when we go into that root word, which is G7, G Greek, the Greek word 4742, the Greek word, the root word of high, high stigma is stigma. And we look up that word stigma. Strong's G 4742, stigma, stigma. And the outline of biblical usage is one, a mark pricked in or branded upon the body. So you see you have to get something pricked, which is a physical action, you know, a physical, a physical form of action. You're getting it pricked and sticked into you or in or branded upon the body to ancient oriental usage. Slaves and soldiers bore the name of the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked, cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to. Now we're gonna go get the law on cutting inside your flesh. So it says commander branded or pricked cut in parentheses into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to. And there were even some devoutees who stamped themselves in this way which the token of their gods, their deity, their idols. So we know in St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, it tells you that you cannot serve two masters. So by taking this mark, you're saying that you're not serving or worshiping the Most High. So there's contradiction all along. That philosophy of the mark is 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 the ideology of sin no the mark is a esau's mark is a physical mark a physical device that what you're going to have to have inside you to complete transactions in order to buy or sell like i said if you want to go buy a soda at a convenience store or go into a you know form of business whether it be your local supermarket or your distribution center such as a walmart or target or what have you or even a venue such as a sportings venue, like a basketball game, a football game, or even a concert, you're gonna to have to have this physical mark in you. Otherwise how, otherwise, how can they tell whether or not you committed sin? If you're saying sin is the mark, how can you go into a venue and purchase and buy and sell stuff with sin? It doesn't make sense unless you've been compromised and you've been given this you know ideology to run with you know it isn't sin so let's go into the law in Leviticus and read that about the cutting of the flesh this is Leviticus 19 in verse 
28. And it reads, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. And we know these idols are dead. They're not the true living power. You see, once you put this cutting in your flesh and you receive this mark, you're making a cutting in the flesh for the dead. There's no power behind this man's system, this beast system. There is no living power. The living, the true living power is in Yahweh. He is. He exists. Okay? By Hashem, in the name Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who the worldly calls Jesus, the so-called black man. So it says, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. You see, this is a physical. This is part of of the law we shouldn't print any marks upon us and we know that mark that they're going to have us to imprint inside us is going to be that mob the mark of the beast you know they're going to have us and by us i'm saying those who accept this man's system to receive his mark in order to buy and sell so it says, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am Yahweh. Now, Yahweh's mark is different from Esau's mark, the so-called white man's mark. Because Esau's mark is physical. Yahweh's mark is spiritual. We're going to get that in Ezekiel. So let's go to Matthew 6 and get... How you cannot serve two masters. This is Matthew 6 and 24. The reason this is Yahweh Shah speaking, red letters. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high Yahweh and Mammon. So when you take that mark, you despise in your howl by showing your uh, uh, allegiance, your alliance to this beast system, this mammoth, this mammoth system, in order to continue to complete transactions, to buy and sell. You're showing your love, your love of money. You know, it tells us you should not have the love for money. Where, where is that at? Let's go there. First Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And you gotta wonder, you gotta ask yourself is these leaders that's teaching that the mark you know is sin have they taken the bag and coveted after money have the lust of the money got to them? Because we know that they're going to have to soon be faced with that decision. Do they take the bag and continue to believe or push their belief onto their congregation that the mark is sin in order to keep their uh, prominence, you know, their statue, their millions or however much they've accumulated throughout the years of telling these, you know, lies that, the mark is what it is, sin, and not what it, you know, supposed to be, a physical device. What are they going to do when that time comes that they have to make that decision in front of their whole congregation and their congregation look to them for leadership and they say, okay, it's presented to us now that we have an option to take this physical device, this mark that you said isn't going to have any outcome and isn't going to change the trajectory of our deliverance because that's not what it is you said it's sin or do we you know continue to live and wait and see how this sin philosophy is going to play out you know these you know these leaders in these congregations are going to have to answer to that and we're going to get that in first peter because it says judgment is going to begin at the at the house of the most high so we're going to see, you know, are, are these leaders going to humble down and say they were wrong? Or are they going to continue to uh, perpetuate and push this lie that the mark is, you know, an ideology uh, of sin? You know, we're going to see. 
because the congregation gonna want answers in that day. You know, because they're gonna see that something ain't adding up, you know, and a lot of them is gonna go down with the sinking ship. And we're gonna read that in Ezekiel 9 as well. So without no further introduction, let's go to Ezekiel 9 and read Yahweh's mark as opposed to Esau Edom, the so-called white man physical mark. This is Ezekiel 9. And let's just start from the top. Verse 1. The vision of slaughter. 1. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And we know that these leaders in these camps that know who they are and, teach, and that's teaching that, you know, that we are the, the biblical Israelites, you know, they in charge over their city, their camps, their congregation. They have a destroying weapon in their hand, which is that tongue. You know, they speak in heresy, saying that the mark is this when they know good and you know good and damn well that it ain't. But in order to keep that bag, that love for the money, they're gonna continue to push this mark and sin up until the last second when they're gonna cause their whole congregation to err and to be what we're going to read in this passage right here, you know, Mark. Okay, so it says, verse 1, He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And, behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. This is one of the angels. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar, and the glory of the Most Power, Slakia, and the glory of the power of Israel, the Most High Yahweh, was going up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house and he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's inkhorn by his side and Yahweh said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem the people and set a mark upon their foreheads of the man that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of thereof so these angels with their inkhorn were supposed to go throughout the city throughout the people and mark on their foreheads, which is a spiritual mark. They wasn't usually they wasn't physically taking the ink horn and writing on their head. Do not know. They was putting that spiritual mark on them. So it says, and Yahweh said it to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right. Because we know in Ecclesiastes, it, te it tells us, surely oppression make of a wise man mad. So if you wise, you're going to be mad. You're going to be sighing and crying for the abominations that's being done, you know. And one of them is that they, t that the people, the leaders that's being put over the congregation of 50, of hundreds, of thousands of people is telling them that this thing that is going to be detrimental to their salvation is something that it isn't. They're telling them that this mark is the, is the mark of sin. And they try to break it down in a way that the people can believe them. Oh, your right hand is used for this in conjunction with your forehead. Therefore, if you think it, your right hand acts it out. You know, that's, that's a complete breakdown that doesn't make sense how is what you thinking you know go influence what you buy in the real in the real world in the physical world so if you think in sin then you're not going to be able to buy and sell because you thought it out in your head and you played it out in your hand now you can't complete co commerce or complete transactions as a, as opposed to you know having this physical mark and not being able to go inside a store and buy and sell because you don't have it when the prophecy says that 
he causes all, both rich and poor, small and great, free and bond, to receive that mark. So in order for you to continue to buy and sell, you're going to have to receive that mark, not be able to, not being able to think of a sin and then act it out and being punished by not being able to buy or sell. No, that doesn't make sense. So like I said, in, Ecc in Ecclesiastes 7, let's go there. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, it says, Surely your oppression make of a wise man mad, and a gift destroy of the heart. We know that gift that destroy of the heart, that mind, is the fact that the love of money is the root of all evil and that's why some of these leaders in these camps that know who they are is compromised by saying that the mark is sin because they have the love the lust of money they don't have a clear a clear mind they don't have a you know a clear heart is being destroyed so that's why in ezekiel 9 it says Verse 4, And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So those, those men that sigh and cry, they are oppressed, because surely oppression making a wise man mad. So mark them, you know, because they telling the truth. They putting, they putting in the work to try to, you know, call to the elect as many that will listen to the marriage. Verse five, and to the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. So those who don't cry and sigh, you know, and take fast to this belief that the mark is sin, you know, and if you think of, think of it in your forehead, you act it out in your right hand, you know, smite them spare not and we're gonna see when he say spare not he means spare not none so it says and to the others he said in my hearing go ye after him through the city and smite let not your eyes spare neither have ye pity so the angels has been given the charge to smite them have no pity and we're gonna fit and we're gonna find out you know it, it doesn't matter small or great rich or poor we gonna see so let's read this verse one more time because when we go into it i don't want to hear oh no that he would no he will do it he's saying it right now verse five and to the others he said in my hearing go you after him through the city and he, this is him giving charge to the angels and smite let not your eyes spare neither have ye pity slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women. So he's not going to spare none. Once you take this mark, that's going to be it. And we're going to read about that in the nation in Revelation, the 14th chapter. So he's telling the angels to slay the utterly old, no matter if you're 90 to 100 years old or older, and young, no matter if you just been born and they implement that mark and they give it to your newborn baby, smite them and little children you know woe to them that give suck in those days little children gonna get it too whoever whoever perished from being innocent it tells us that in Job slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women and the women as well because the congregation is made you know, they congregation got women involved in it too. Got little ones, you got infants, you know. That's why we're gonna get that in First Peter the fourth chapter. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. What mark? The mark that the most high gave to the angels, to those men that cry and sigh over the abominations. This is not the same mark spoken of in Revelation the 13th chapter, which is a physical mark. This mark right here, let's go there. It's Hebrew, it's the Hebrew word what?
Tom. Strong's H8420. Tav. Tav. Outline of biblical usage. Desire. Mark. A mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. So this is a spiritual mark. Ex a, and a, a sign of exemption from judgment. And we know that judgment we're going to get in Revelation the 14th chapter. So those who have this spiritual mark are going to be exempt from that judgment. And we read it in this same chapter, verse 6, who gonna, who's going to all get that judgment? Because the Most High gave charge to the angel not to spare whatever your eye can see. That's in verse 6, slay utterly old and young. Verse 5, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. See, these angels, they take command from Yahweh. The way he says goes, they don't have any emotions. You know, if he says spare not, having you no pity, they're not going to have no pity on the young, the old, the what? The maids, the little children, and women, they're not going to have any pity. Once you receive and take that mark, that's going to be it for you. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. First Peter 4.17, we're going to get that. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. You know, and that's going to be those leaders that's telling their congregation that the mark spoken of in Revelation 13 is the mark of sin. You're not going to be able to buy and sell with sin. Well, how in the hell does that make sense? How are they going to be able to tell you when you go to a venue such as a, a basketball game whether or not you can come into the game based on whether or not you sin the previous day beforehand? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the leaders of these congregations know that. But one can can, can uh, come to the conclusion or deduce that they've taken or they received the love of money. So it says, the end of verse 6, then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. So these angels are going to get busy once it's that time, man. And they're going to take all that, they're going to get all that, all the people in the congregation that follow after these leaders, man, and took that mark. You know, that's going to be it. They're going to have to deal with it, man. And you know, they preaching that, you know, they preaching order. So, you know, the women going to follow after the men and the children after the women, they are going to be led to the slaughterhouse. If these leaders don't repent while there's still time and teach their congregation the correct breakdown of Revelation 13, chapter 16 on down to 18, which is crucial to their salvation, you know, they're going to have a lot of blood on their hand, man. Let's go there in 1 Peter 4 and 17. First Peter 4 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high and it and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the most high so we already know the two thirds is marked but those of us who know that we are you know the biblical Israelites and trying to live you know a life based on you know faith and Yahweh Shai and trying to keep the commandments and you being led astray through your leaders and your congregations by telling you that the mark of Revelation the 13th chapter is anything other than what it is such as sin or philosophy how much more then to the two thirds who don't even take notion or you know take heed to that at all you're going to be in the same category as them and we know that in Zechariah the 13th chapter. Let's go there. And then let's go to the judgment. It says Zechariah 13 and let's go down to seven. It says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, 
saith Yahweh host, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Eight, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So we know two thirds of us, speaking of the Israelites, are going to be cut off and die from this judgment, you know. And we're going to get that judgment in Revelation, the 14th chapter. And it says, but the third, the one third should be left therein. Okay, so one third is going to be left therein to what? And I will bring the third part through the fire and will, and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. See, so these ones that know, you know, they're going to call on Yahweh because the two thirds, some of them have the name. But when you take that karagma, that stigma, and put it inside your right hand, calling on the name of Yahweh, is it going to do you? Do you any good? When you call on Yahweh Shai, he's going to say, what does he say? Not all that calls should I answer. Lord, Lord, haven't I, you know, healed people in your name? But you didn't keep, you didn't keep the, you know, the commandment of what was given in Leviticus 19, you know, not to make cutting in the flesh for the dead. Because this cutting in the flesh is going to cost you your salvation. So he's not going to hear you when you call upon him. So it says, verse 9, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will, and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They should call on my name and I will hear them and I will say it is my people and they should say Yahweh is my power. So we're going to see, you know, when those times come, exactly who's going to take what, you know, because ultimately you've been led astray for a reason, for a purpose. You have to be called and be part of this, you know, ministry. You have to be part of the elect. It says in uh, Matthew, the 20th chapter, it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. So, yeah, many are called, but only few are chosen. Chosen for what? To be delivered, to be part of the elect, to receive salvation. All of Israel is going to be safe once we get into the kingdom, but how you get into the kingdom is going to be determined on what you do and how you receive it on this side of the judgment. Now, speaking of judgment, let's go to Revelation, the 14th chapter, and let's get it. Revelation 14 and verse 9, doom for worshipers of the beast. For those of you who buy into that belief that the mark spoken of in Revelation 13 is sin, it's a philosophy that you can think it out and then act it out with your right hand, your dominant hand, and therefore you won't be able to buy and sell. This is the fate, the fate of those who believe in that philosophy, that doctrine, that ideology. So it says, verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, Remember we read in Ezekiel 9 that the angel was given, given charge by the Most High to not spare and have no pity on whatever that I see. Young, old, little, little ones, women, maids, don't spare none of them. They take this mark, they've shown their allegiance, their alliance to the beast system. We read in Matthew the 6th chapter 24th verse, 24th verse that you can't serve two masters but either you love the one and hate the other you know man cannot serve both the most high Yahweh and Mammon so verse 9 reads and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand it doesn't matter your right or your love and if you take it in your forehead having no hands at all it's the same judgment so it says and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the most high which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation 
and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So you're going to get that same judgment given to the two-thirds because you're going to be coupled in with the two-thirds. You're going to call on, on Yahweh Shai and he's not going to hear you. You're going to receive that same judgment. Although you did all the works and you believe you kept the faith and believing in him, but you was led astray ultimately because that's how it was set up for you to be because you weren't part of the, the elect. You weren't part of the number. So here it is. You done made it all the way throughout leading up into Jacob's trouble and you've been led to believe that you can take that mark spoken of in Revelation 13th chapter because it wasn't a you know a spiritual mark in the sense that it it wasn't how your leader said that it should be meaning that your leaders told you that it was going to be sin you know as opposed to something physical which is a device so you went ahead and took that device because you was led astray by your leaders telling you that it was something in their eyes as being spiritual meaning not being carnal as flesh meaning that you believe that it was sin so because it was sin and not something physical you went along and went ahead with the program and took it so you can continue to eat and to you know go about your everyday life as long as you didn't sin in your mind you believe that you will be you will be taken care of but well, here it is now you got to find out the hard way because you was led astray that the mark in revelation 13 chapter was indeed after all a physical mark it was a device that you have to have to be able in, to be in, to be able in order to buy and sell. So you're not going. This mark is going to be able to do everything. It's spoken of in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, right around the ninth verse. It's going to be able to produce lion wonders. They're going to say that this mark can tell you your body temperature, whether or not you're sick, you know, whether or not you have any ailments uh, that you can't go into a store to buy and sell and you're going to have your currency whatever that may be at the time put onto this mark whether it's a universal basic income to help you know fight inflation or however they sell it to you it's going to be all put on this physical device this mark so by you taking it you've already showed your allegiance your alliance to this beast system and you were misled by your leaders of your congregation of your cities because they told you what? That this mark is going to be, you know, spiritual in a sense because sin can be looked at as not being a physical, tangible thing. If you sin, that's an act. You know, you acting it out in your head like some of these leaders of these congregations saying, you act it out in your head first and, and then you play it out with your right hand. So by having that ideology or philosophy or with the mark of, is spoken of in Revelation 13, you went ahead and took the mark knowing good and knowing well that it wasn't. So now both you and the leaders of your congregation are going to be doomed with the judgment that we're reading of right now, Revelation the 14th chapter. You for taking it and them for telling you what it was when it wasn't. Okay? So it says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. And we know that fire and brimstone is down, is going to be down here in Babylon, the great, which is America, once those nuclear missiles come, spoken of in Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, right around the 14th verse, all those who bend the boat, you know, take aim and let them go man they gonna come and set this whole land from sea to shine from sea to shining sea you know from coast to coast they're gonna set it on fire man with those nuclear missiles and you're gonna be left right down here in the presence of the holy angels in the lamb to have to deal with it okay so in closure the mark spoken of in revelation 13 chapter which is esau's mark is not the same as the mark spoken of in Ezekiel the ninth chapter, which is Yahweh, uh, mark they're not the same. They're not the same. They're two completely different things. This man we read in Second Corinthians ten and verse four, 
he is a cardinal. He's cardinal, so his mark is going to be physical. Those who have wisdom count the number. We counted the number. We went, in, we went into the number. Stigma, which was the root word. A prick, a cutting of the flesh. Then we went into Leviticus, the 19th chapter, the 28th verse, and we got the law on the cutting of the flesh for the dead. So by you taking his mark, you taking his side, and you showing your allegiance, your alliance to this man and his beast system. We read that in Matthew the 6th chapter, the 24th verse, that you can't serve two masters. So you take his mark, you exempting yourself, you know, <clears throat> from having the mark spoken of in Ezekiel the 9th chapter, which is going to exempt you from judgment when we read it in Revelation the 14th chapter that that angel is cut loose, man, because he's not going to spare we read it in Ezekiel the ninth chapter, the fifth, sixth verse that spare not what your eye can see. Young and old, little ones, virgin, maids, women, do them all. They all got to get it. And it's going to begin in the, and we read that, it's going to begin in the, in, in the house of the Most High. Those who know better. Starting with the ancient leaders, those that's been put in, or believe that they've been put in charge over the congregation. It's going to begin with them because they're going to have the answer for leading their flock astray. When they had ample amount of time to repent because they pride, you know, it wouldn't let them repent. So they went up, they went along and went along with the program that pushed that this mark that's spoken of in Revelation 13 chapter is something that you think of and then act out as opposed to what it actually is a physical device that you put in your right hand or in your forehead in order to buy and sell and we're reading the judgment for those who take it because popular you know contrary to popular belief you know even if you take that device out of your hand you still gonna get the judgment you don't know if you're gonna be automatically you know deleted because you take it out because you don't know how your body gonna react to taking that foreign physical object out of your body your body may shut down or you may be kept around just long enough to drink this same cup of wrath of indignation you know so you want to get it right while you still have a chance you know because once they roll this thing out and it's made mandatory that's another thing because you got some of these leaders in the camps are saying what aren't or isn't the mark already out yeah but it's not mandated it's not it hasn't been made mandatory it hasn't been mandated once it's been mandated that's why it says in revelation the 13th chapter and he calls us all that's the mandate being put out so now you got to have it right now you it's a choice they you got people in sweden that's doing it just for the sake of it but once he calls us all once he mandates it then it's being made manda mandatory now you have to have it to conduct business, to go into your sporting events, to go into your supermarkets. You know, you're going to have to have this thing. Right now, it's not mandated. He hasn't caused all, but he's on his way to cause all. He's working up and putting together his man-made crisis so that it can be justified when he mandates it to cause us all to receive this mark in their right hand or in their forehead you know, in order to buy ourselves. So he's working on it right now and he's getting close to that, you know, that perfection. Whether it's the implosion of this economy, whether it's an outbreak, you know, he's working on it and he's getting close to where he's going to get it and roll out with it and he's going to have it to where it's made mandated, where he calls his all. So he's coming around to it and he's getting ready to bring it out, okay? So yeah, he's getting ready to bring it out and he's getting ready to come with it. So in order for you to be prepared, you have to know what it is. And if you don't know what it is because your congregation has led you astray, then you're going to take it and you're going to receive this judgment. All right. So let's go ahead and close out in 1 Peter. 5 and verse 8. This is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. And it reads, be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may, whom he may devour. So this is the time you need to be sober and be vigilant, and to know, do your 
due diligence and look into these words so you can see exactly what the difference is between Esau's mark and Yahweh's mark. Because they may try to play the field and say that they both are one and the same, but they're not. Even in their, you know, respective languages, you can see that the Hebrew word is different from the Greek word. Okay? So there's two different things going on here. You got a physical mark, which is this man's mark, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Then you have the mark of the Most High, Yahweh's mark, which is going to exempt those who sigh and cry, who are, you know, speaking the truth and telling the people, you know, repent. Surely oppression will make up a wise man mad. You know, so you have to be sober and you have to be vigilant. Do your, do your homework, man. Because you're leaving your salvation in the hands of another man. You know? What does the word say? Okay, yeah, these, these elders, you know, these leaders, they can give you so much, but you have to do your due diligence. Look into these words yourself. Do your homework. Do your research. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour. He may very well, he may very well much let these people stay on up until the last minute because they pushing something that's detrimental to your health, to your salvation. These camps may be led astray and, you know, allowed to stay on once the feminine of the word take place because they pushing something that Esau, Edom, the adversary, the roaring lion, can use to his benefit which is to continue to push this idea that the mark is sin. You know, he can use them because they look like us. They have a zeal. They have a form of knowledge. They have just enough that can throw the mask off and that can keep those people up until that time to believe, therefore taking it, therefore having the same judgment as the two-thirds and the rest of the heathens here in America. You know, Esau can use them. So as long as they with that, you know, the mark is sin, you know, you may see them hang around for a while. But as soon as they repent, if it's in them to repent and to tell their congregation what it is, then they're going to be lumped in with the rest that's preaching that truth and be taken off and the feminine of the word going to hit like a jackpot, man. So it's in your best, you know, it's in your best, what's the word? interest to be sober be vigilant do your work and do it diligently look into these words add them up look at the precepts make an informed decision pray on it you know the holy spirit leads you show you the way because you get it wrong when that time comes and you take this mark that's going to be it for you because this mark isn't as esau mark isn't the same as yahweh's mark all right so hopefully someone was able to take something away with away from that. And if it be the Lord's will, until the next time, stay strong, stay in the faith. We almost home. Shalom.